A high-tech drone now exists that costs less than a used car, but can travel over 600 miles, capture live surveillance, and perform precision missions with ease. Meet China's Phi Long 300D, a next-generation aerial system built for speed, flexibility, and affordability. With a reported price tag of just $10,000, this low-cost powerhouse is redefining what's possible in unmanned flight and reshaping the future of drone technology worldwide. The first remarkable thing about the Phylong 300D is its astonishingly low unit price. Reports suggest it could cost as little as US $10,000. Such a figure stands out when you compare it with other systems in the same general class. According to recent reporting, the Chinese state-owned firm Narinko developed this platform with mass production and cost-effectiveness front of mind, aiming to create an affordable yet capable drone that could be easily exported and integrated into existing defense infrastructures worldwide. Beyond price, its design is tailored for efficiency. The drone uses a piston engine running on standard fuel rather than a specialized jet turbine, and adopts a delta wing profile, which reportedly grants extended range with modest power. One simulation claimed the drone covered 621 miles, evaded air defenses, and completed a simulated strike. These reported numbers suggest the platform blends endurance, strike, and surveillance roles in a single airframe, while remaining inexpensive to operate and simple to maintain. Its modular warhead capability is also noteworthy, Different mission profiles, surveillance, reconnaissance, strike, can be loaded with different payloads, making the system adaptable to varying operational needs. The design simplicity, standard fuel, easy construction, points to high reliability, but also risk in terms of opposing systems expecting fewer, more expensive assets. In essence, the Phylong 300D shifts emphasis from high-cost, high-tech single units to many moderately capable, cost-effective units. Because each unit is cheap, users could deploy many simultaneously or maintain large inventories. When you deploy multiple units, you gain persistent presence, repeated coverage, and saturation capacity. Practically, this means a user could monitor a region in real time, then send in a strike version of the same platform, leveraging flexibility and scale. With its combination of low-cost and dual-role capability, the Phylong 300D is positioned as a tool for monitoring, deterrence, and tactical operations in contested or sensitive regions. According to sources, its role is explicitly conceived for border regions, providing real-time surveillance over contested zones and then delivering strike capability if required. Because of its affordability, this platform gives smaller states the chance to build unmanned fleets rather than rely solely on expensive manned systems. Consider this, a nation that formerly could afford only a handful of expensive drones or manned aircraft might instead procure dozens or hundreds of cheaper ones. This changes the strategic balance. Potential buyers such as Pakistan have been mentioned in media reports as early customers, given their long-standing desire for unmanned capability and limited budgets. The drone is thus part of a broader shift in regional procurement, less emphasis on premium price tags, more on mass affordable systems. From a deterrent standpoint, the psychological effect of having a large inventory of capable unmanned platforms may be significant. Instead of relying solely on traditional platforms like jets or missiles, a state could deploy numerous drones persistently, tracking and responding to adversarial actions. In contested border zones, that capability heightens visibility and responsiveness. Because of its delta wing range and modular payloads, the Phylong 300D could loiter for extended periods, monitor activity, then strike if needed, all with relatively modest investment. This matters also because legacy defense systems have often been designed for high-end threats, aircraft, cruise missiles, sophisticated drones. Many were not optimized for large volumes of cheaper unmanned systems. The arrival of a system like the Phylong 300D forces a rethink. How do you monitor and preempt many relatively low-cost systems? How do you defend against them? How do you deny adversary fleets that might number in dozens or hundreds? The strategic equilibrium shifts. From a supply chain and export lens, 
The drone's low price makes it particularly attractive to states looking to obtain unmanned power without prohibitive cost. That could accelerate the diffusion of the capability globally. Smaller states may see unmanned fleets as attainable. Zooming outward, the emergence of the Phylong 300D signals a broader transformation in how aerial platforms are conceived and deployed. In recent years, so-called loitering munitions, unmanned systems that can linger and strike, have become increasingly common in modern scenarios. The new twist is cost. When such systems become cheap, they multiply risk and shift operational thinking, creating a new balance where affordability and accessibility become as strategically valuable as cutting-edge performance or stealth technology, especially for nations seeking efficient modernization of their aerial capabilities. Because the Phylong 300D is reportedly deployable at a fraction of the cost of comparable systems, some estimates place other platforms at tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars each, the unit economics change. When each platform costs only a few thousand or tens of thousands of dollars, deploying dozens or hundreds becomes plausible. For budget-constrained operators, that means unmanned fleets are within reach. This has practical implications. First, defense design must pivot. Instead of protecting against a handful of high-end intruders, one might need to guard against swarms of many low-cost units. That alters sensor allocation, response protocols, air defense design, and training. Second, unmanned proliferation changes deterrence models. It becomes less about singular high-value strikes and more about numbers, presence, and persistent coverage. States may shift investment from expensive platforms to more numerous unmanned units, reinvesting savings into fleet size and resilience. Additionally, this trend may reconfigure asset life cycles. With a lower unit cost, a higher risk of loss is acceptable because the replacement burden is low. That reduces the psychological barrier to deploying unmanned units in more aggressive or opportunistic ways. It also drives down the cost of maintaining aerial presence over wide areas. From a strategic economic lens, the rising availability of mass-produced, low-cost unmanned platforms means smaller states can gain capabilities previously reserved for major powers. That widens the field of actors capable of unmanned operations at scale. It may also redefine alliances, procurement models, and deterrent strategies across regions. In short, platforms like the Phylong 300D don't just add a new tool, they redefine the toolbox. They bring affordable scale, multi-role flexibility, and a shift away from expensive singular assets. As a result, we are moving into an era where unmanned fleets might matter more than single flagship platforms. The Phylong 300D illustrates how affordability, endurance, and adaptability are combining to create a new class of unmanned aerial tool. It isn't just about one drone. It's about the shift it represents, from expensive singular platforms to mass deployable fleets. We saw how the design supports range and flexibility, how the strategic role empowers smaller states and border operations, and how the broader pattern of low-cost unmanned platforms is reshaping aerial operations globally. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.